Just a heads up, I don't plan on cluttering this channel with a bunch of Fusion 360 tips and tricks, but I did come across a clever solution to a problem, I think, that doesn't exist on the internet, so I wanted to share it on our public channel uh, rather than the Fusion 360 course because I know there's a lot of people who are asking how to do this and there's just no answer out there, and I think I found the answer. So the question is, how do you make a spring work in Fusion 360? Uh, and so I've actually done it. If you come in here on our screen, you can see I've made this little spring that not only acts like a spring, but it also springs back on its own. And my reason for making this is I'm trying to model this little 12 volt solenoid. Uh, I'm going to be making a little whack-a-mole game for our one-year-old son Hudson, and I'm going to be using these. And I wanted to model the solenoid so that I could make the thing itself in Fusion. Here is the workaround that I found. So let's create a new design spring and we're actually going to make this one this exact spring so I can show you exactly how to do it uh, I haven't done this yet so hopefully this works so first thing I'm going to do is turn on the origin and then we are going to select create and then coil and let's go on the bottom plane here and then actually let's do a top down view and click right on our origin and do the 12 millimeter base that we have on this and it's going to automatically basically make that spring I used in my example. But my spring actually has a little taper to it. And uh, so with a diameter of eight, basically I worked out it's about a 10 degree angle on there. So we go 10 degrees and it's actually reverse. So we go negative 10 degrees. And then we need to change the section size. You notice our spring is a lot thinner. In fact, it's about half a millimeter rather than three millimeter. So say 0.5. And then lastly, we choose the height, uh, which is also 12 millimeters, not 18. And the revolutions, one, two, three, four. So that's good there at four. Those are our settings, we click okay. And so now we've got our spring that looks like our spring, but Fusion has no functionality if we wanted to join these parts with a spring to make them springy. So the hack is to split your spring in half. So let's turn our origin back on. We're gonna type S on our keyboard, which you can't see. Let me turn on my keystrokes here. There we go. Okay, and type split. We're gonna split this body. The body is our spring. The splitting tool is this plane, and it can be any plane that divides the spring in half, and click OK. Now if you look in our bodies, we have all of our spring is divided in half. And trick number two is to apply revolute joints to every one of these joints so that they rotate on each other. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Let's say assemble as built joint. Oops, and you can't apply joints to bodies. These all need to be components. So hold shift, click them all, and say create components from bodies. Click assemble as built joint. Change this to a revolute joint, and we're gonna select our first little part and our second little part, and that's gonna ask us where we want to revolute, and we want it inside where the two meet right there. And if you can get the flags all the same, either up or down, it helps, but it's not absolutely necessary. Then you click OK. Press and hold your right mouse button and drag up to repeat the last function, which was a joint, as-built joint. Select the next two. Oh, that one did not work. Cancel that. See how I did the flag in the wrong place? Okay, so now we've got all of our revolute joints attached. If we are were to ground this first component, you'll notice we're like, a quarter of the way there kind of <laughs> acts like a spring but not really so let's undo that let's unground this component and we'll show you trick number two which is to force these revolute joints within a slider joint so to do that we're going to create a new sketch on our bottom plane let's just make it a 15 millimeter circle say stop at sketch press e for extrude drag this down one millimeter is fine, but we don't want to cut. We want a new component out of it. Click OK. Let's change the name of that component to bottom. We're going to 
copy that component, right click on the top and say paste new and move it up. So it's just touching that top coil. Click OK. Now we're going to apply rigid joints from those plates to the top coils. We'll say assemble as built joint. Uh, capture that last movement we just did. We'll say from here to here, not a revolute. We want that a rigid. Click OK. Then we select the bottom plate and this one. We click OK. Now here is the big trick. Uh, well, the medium sized trick, there's a bigger trick in a second. It's to apply a slider joint between these two plates. So we do another as built joint from this top one to this bottom one. This time it's a slider. And the direction of movement is right here in the middle of this top one, right here. There we go. Click OK. And now we're pretty close. If you, oh, we got to ground the bottom plate. Sorry about that. Top didn't rename, rename that top, bottom, right click, select ground. So now we've got a spring and it works pretty good. And for most situations, this would be okay. You could apply some contact sets so it doesn't go over itself and it would work. Uh, but you'll notice a lot of the work is being done from the first bottom coils uh, and the tops are kind of hardly not moving at all. So we're gonna add some motion links to fix that. So what we're gonna do is select assemble, motion link, and we're gonna choose just the side. Let's start with one side. I found if you do all of them, it kind of messes up sometimes. And you kind of have to mess around with this. I, like for my example, it was negative 10 millimeters. But since this one's so much shorter, let's change the distance to negative three and try five degrees. And I'm just literally eyeballing it to see if that springy on just that first joint looks natural. So negative three, five, we'll start with that. We can edit it in a minute if it doesn't. So let's click this slider and click the next one, negative three, five. That looks pretty good. Repeat from the slider to this one. And we're linking these joints together so that when one slides, the other revolutes. And you notice that this one kind of looks really wonky. That's because the flag was the opposite direction. So just change the angle to negative five. There we go. Getting closer. That may even be good. Yeah, that's real good actually. Uh, actually the bottom one, this one here doesn't look natural. So let's add one to that as well. So revert, repeat, motion link, assemble, motion link from this one to this one, negative three, five. And these are the dimensions that are going to change. Uh, that needs to be negative five based on your See, adding that one just screwed it up. We're not gonna do that one. We need to jump to the other side. So let's say repeat motion link from this one to this side. We'll go negative three, five. And that needs to be a negative five. And that looks good, except it messed up that middle one. So let's try adding a middle one there. It's kind of trial and error here. This one's gonna be negative three, five. It needs to be negative five. There we go, that's a spring. And it maintains its shape, which is good. So now we click okay. Now let's see, that's real nice. And that is probably perfect for 99.9% .9 of projects, but I wanted to take it one step further and see if we could actually make it retract the way that you would expect. And this should be as simple as going to your slider, editing the joint limits and adding a rest at zero millimeters so that when you drag it down, it just pops back up. But for whatever reason, you can't add a rest with something attached to motion links. So first of all, I actually do want to add a few joint limits here. Let's take off that rest, add a minimum and a maximum because we want it to be able to stop where it makes sense for a spring. A little more than three would have been fine. Let's go edit joint limits. Let's make it negative five. Click OK. Yeah, now this will go from here to here and stop. So if we want this to spring back on its own, we add, need to add one more plate on the top with another slider joint without any motion links and that will spring back. So we come down to the top, we copy, we go to our top level component, we select paste new. We don't want to move it around, we want it just overlapping the exact same one. And now we say as built joint between this top and this top. And this one we want to be rigid. 
So basically there's two tops right on top of each other. You can't tell the difference and click OK. Then we want to do a new as built joint from our new top to our bottom. This needs to be a slider right in the same position as the old top. Click OK. And then this one, if we go to our new slider joint, edit the joint limits and put a rest at zero millimeters and click OK. Now when you drag this down and let go, it pops right back up. There you go. Let's turn off the joint so we can look at it and enjoy it a little more. <laughs> uh, so, and then of course, if you don't need these washers on the top and bottom, you can just turn them off and the spring will act exactly like you would expect without them. So there you go. That's how you make a spring work in Fusion 360. Uh, not only compress, but also spring back on its own. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy this kind of thing, don't forget we do have a Fusion 360 course. Uh, I'll leave a coupon link in the description where you can go check that out. And we'll be building not only this entire solenoid in a model, but also I'll be posting the whack-a-mole game eventually, whenever I get around to designing it as uh, extra credit in the extra credit section of that course. So we'll see you there. Bye.